Good evening, everybody. Hi, guys. This is um, Denise live here in the Wellness Lounge. Um, it's another Saturday night, and we're back here again together. Um, this, as you know, is um, this was an idea that that came to me um, during during lockdown, and I had a thought to check in with everybody here in the wellness lounge like we used to do on Saturday evenings. So here I am again and it's lovely to be here with you all. And it's nice to have this on a Saturday night, even for me, because it's just something that helps me to talk about what I'm learning about myself and share it with like-minded people you know so hope you're all doing okay um i hope you all had a good week i um yeah i've been continuing on with with my daily readings and daily lessons in um a course in miracles and you know this evening i i picked the topic of vigilance because um that came up in one of the talks I was listening to this week, um, the topic of vigilance. And it's something that I would have been familiar enough with over the years, um, over my my own journey, you know, and talking about um, keeping ourselves well, you know, mentally, physically, but especially, you know, mentally and minding, you know, what's going on inside our head, in our heads. Um, so yeah i picked the topic of vigilance because it kind of jumped out at me today and it's something that i thought it would be nice to talk about and to hear what other people think about about vigilance hi jackie um so for me when i heard this topic it coming into my mind you know i thought yeah you know i think this is good because we're here we're we're in lockdown um i know everybody's having a different experience of lockdown and it depends on what you're doing on a daily basis, whether you're working, not working, exercising, you know, whether things are feeling like they might be getting a bit on top of you or not. Hi, Grania. Um, so welcome, guys. Welcome, everybody. So, yeah, for me, when I think about the topic of vigilance, I think about um, kind of guarding my own my own sanity, really, and my own mental health. Um, and for me, that's all tied into, you know, my spiritual journey as well and my spiritual wellness. Um, so what is what how would I define vigilance? Well, I suppose for me, and from the readings and the studying that I've been doing over the last while, it's about actually being aware of, you know, the thoughts that I'm thinking and whether or not these are serving me well, you know. So even if I was to ask you now just to check in, you know, with yourself while you're watching this video, you know, and just even take a breath for a second and just um, be aware of what thoughts are running through your mind. You know, are you listening to my voice? You know, are you thinking about what you need to do in a minute? Are you, you know, doing five different things at once, um, which I do a lot, um, but just you know, for me, vigilance is about checking in with myself throughout the day to see, you know, how am I feeling? And that will tell me, you know, whether or not I need to alter my thoughts because my thoughts actually create my reality. It's not the other way around. You know, that's something I've I've come to learn, you know, as I as I've gone on my my journey, my path day, is I create the world I see. Um, and that can be a challenging enough um, concept to get one's head around. Um, but I'm fairly, fairly OK with that one now. But so what that means is that the world I see is is a projection of the thoughts that I'm having on a daily basis. So if I decide in the morning that it's it's raining and miserable and, you know, depressing and, you know, then that's that's what I, the story I'm telling myself and that's what I'm going to experience you know so 
I'd be asking you to think about, you know, what what is the story I'm telling myself about my life, you know, um, and what thoughts do I need to be vigilant about, you know, um, like we're talking here about being happy and peaceful and joyful, which I believe is possible, you know, for each of us on a daily basis, no matter what circumstances are going on in our lives or in the world. Um, you know, and I believe peace in the world starts with peace in your mind and in, in my mind. And, you know, in a greater general, bigger scheme of things, I believe we're all one mind anyway. Um, I'm learning about that now with Course in Miracles, but even just bringing it back to basics, just on a daily basis, you know, it's about really cleaning up, you know, my, my thoughts and my mind. And going back to my earlier talks, like I talked about having purpose and living a life of purpose. So, you know, if you're finding through, you know, discomfort in your life, or if you've had situations that have been really challenging and you've had to think, right, there must be, there has to be another way. You know, this is what we always talk about on these sessions is finding another way, you know, not necessarily the norm. Um, like most of us are told, like, you know, go to school, get a good education, get a good job, pay your bills, you know, maybe get married, have kids, retire, um, get to enjoy some of that if you're lucky. And then we die, you know, and, you know, I, I suppose I've just had a different kind of a life where I've I've had to look at the conditioning that I was brought up with, you know, and not in a way that makes anybody wrong, you know, but just to look at, okay, what are the thoughts and beliefs that I have under the surface that I'm not even aware of that drive my behavior on a daily basis? And the reason I had to look at that for me was because I ended up in re repetitive situations that caused me a lot of emotional turmoil. Um, and you know, I've experienced a lot of losses in my life, loss, lots of people, um, a lot of change, a lot of, you know, challenging situations. You know, not not um, a lot of people have a lot have had a lot worse challenges than I have, but just for me, you know, I've been in a lot of situations where I felt very very challenged to cope with what was going on in my mind. You know, and it was all about what's going on in my mind. You know a situation happens and then how i interpret it and how i carry that forward with me um decides whether or not i'm going to be able to leave something in the past or whether i carry it with me every day and you know for me then i've been brought to this place where i've been training my mind you know with the help of different teachers but particularly the book of course in miracles and a lot of other people in my life, you know, a good therapist. Um, I do believe in the value of psychotherapy. I believe it has a, a time and a place, you know, and really getting down into unconscious beliefs with a, with a good ter therapist. I would highly recommend that. Not easy or pretty, um, but definitely I feel, you know, worth exploring. You know, I always say at the start of these sessions that this might not be for everybody and that's OK. You know, like I felt inspired to come on here and talk to people. And, you know, if I have something to share that can help me as a reminder and also help anybody else, then, you know, I kind of have to be brave enough to do that. You know, and every time I do this, like I have thoughts in my head going why are you doing this like what can you possibly have to say that can help other people so i have like a a kind of attack of the mind every time i do this but i just i'm getting better at seeing those thoughts for the nothingness that they are you know that they're just a whole load of absolute rubbish and that's one of the things i'm learning through training my mind is looking at what well, what's real here and what isn't real and this is where you know, I invite you to think about the the bigger picture here, you know, like, have you found a spiritual pathway? Hey, Pamela, um, have you found something 
in the world that sustains you, you know, something that's bigger and better than yourself. And there's many, many pathways to truth and enlightenment. Um, I found, of course, the miracles. I've also listened to lots and lots of teachers over the last couple of decades that brought me to this point. Um, so if we're talking about true peace and happiness and joy, which I believe we can experience right here, right now, then are you willing to like surrender and admit that of yourself, of your own power, you kind of don't get hugely very far? You know, I've had to look at that and look at where my best thinking has got me in the past. And as I said, it was into a lot of repetitive situations where the outcome was always the same. You know, emotional pain, turmoil, loss, perceived loss. Um, and just wondering, like, how did I end up here again? You know, um, and I've had to really, really look at, you know, what are my beliefs? What's actually driving my behavior? And usually it's some very, very ego. And when I say ego driven, I'm talking about a really limited version of ourselves that we operate from, I believe, on a on a daily basis, unless we start to explore it. You know, that's small self that wants, I want this and I want that, you know, I want that relationship. I want this house. I want these clothes. I want that job. I want to look like this. You know, that's dry. Is, is that, is that, you know, calling the shots, you know, am I at the whim of my, my every want and desire? Or do I have an ability to just kind of analyze, just, just observe those thoughts and realize they're apps, they're nothing and let them diminish back down into the nothingness from where they came, you know, because what actually is real about us, I believe, can't be threatened in any way. You know, and that's what is taught as well on the Course in Miracles, like nothing real can be threatened and nothing unreal exists. And therein lies the peace of God, they would say. Um, but if we take that, you know, nothing real can be threatened. So who I am really, really is is so above and beyond um, fear, you know, embarrassment, loss, even pain. You know, and it's taken me a long time to realize that, like, if I create the world I see by my projected thoughts and projecting them outwards onto the world, I've actually created all the pain in my life, if you like that. And that's not excusing people for poor behavior, you know, but in a way I've invited in these experiences because somewhere I have a belief in, in pain and suffering, you know, that life is hard and you know, things don't always work out and people go away and there is loss, there is pain, there is suffering. And I'm exploring all that now. And, you know, it probably doesn't sound very appealing. But it's not the easiest of things to do, but I'm willing to let go whatever is not serving me well, because I'm at a, I'm just at a stage in my life where I'm kind of like, yeah, you know, I'm done. I've had enough, like I've had enough of all that. And if that means I live a life that's not really, you know, of this world or where I don't feel I need all the things that society or our culture would tell me that I should have, you know, then I'm okay with that, you know, um, because really all I know that I need is, is peace in my mind, you know, and to have peace and contentment, which we can have, as I said, like right here, right now, you know, if you just focus for a minute on the part of you that is always still and peaceful, maybe it's like the observer of your thoughts or just finding a place of stillness in your mind and that can never be taken away. It might feel sometimes like your peace is gone or that you can't find it anymore, or that something really terrible has happened and that you'll never be peaceful again and you'll never be happy again. But really we just create blocks in our mind to the presence of this love that is just always there, you know? And it doesn't mean that we don't experience emotions because we do. And I think it's very healthy to 
experience anger, sadness, frustration, you know, and get it all out. And I've just found that the more I've I've got out and delved into and shared, the more and more of this peace and love I'm finding is actually behind all that pain, all that fear. You know, so maybe, you know, I would ask you just to see, you know, what is it that you're holding on to? Um hello. I'm just seeing your comments here, Caroline, Sheila, Andrew. Welcome. You know, just ask yourself, you know, what is it I'm holding on to? You know, is there something that I'm really afraid of? You know, what am I actually really afraid of? You know, in this COVID pandemic, is it am I afraid of death? Am I afraid of family members dying? You know, what is it? What's my biggest fear? And I would say just invite that in, you know. You know, give it a seat at the table and say, okay, you know, I'm going to look at you and I'm going to see what this fear is all about. You know, do I really believe that I'm I'm completely alone on this earth and that I have no connection to any power greater than myself or any source or, you know, and that I have to figure everything out by myself? And, you know, is that belief, if that's working for you, great, you know? Um, for me personally, you know, I have found that when I have been like that in my life and felt like that, I, it was extremely difficult. You know, if I felt unsupported, lonely, alone, disconnected, um, then higher on, on, then that's a really, really tough place to be, you know, and our ego mind, I find, you know, I'm not an expert on any of this. I'm just sharing with you what I'm learning. The ego part of our ego mind you know if it's not connected to our true source so if we're not kind of tuning in on a daily basis and saying okay I have all this chatter going on in my head and I have thoughts that want me to go in a million different directions every morning but I'm actually just going to sit for a minute I'm going to breathe and I'm going to you know develop some kind of contact with this power that sustains me then maybe that power might direct my thinking for me maybe I don't need to do anything you know and though how do I know if I'm on the right track do you feel okay do you feel happy well then you probably are you know that's what I've learned um you know um so that's been my experience you know that if I'm in my right mind and I'm connected to something bigger and better than me, Denise, this person in this body having this life experience, then I can get all the power I need, you know, and I don't really need to figure anything out. I just need to show up and <laughs> do the next right thing. And it just makes everything so simple, you know, because there's actually nothing to be worried about then. Um. You know, so I, there's a lovely lesson here, actually, that I wanted to read for you on that subject. So we're talking about being vigilant and we're talking about protecting our mind because that is where our peace is to be found and protected and nurtured. So I'm just going to read from A Course in Miracles and it's lesson number 48 from the workbook. And it says there is nothing to fear. The idea for today simply states a fact. It is not a fact to those who believe in illusions, but illusions are not facts. In truth, there is nothing to fear. It is very easy to recognize this, but it is very difficult to recognize it for those who want illusions to be true. Today's practice periods will be very short, very simple and very frequent. Merely repeat the idea as often as possible. You can use it with your eyes open at any time and in any situation. It is strongly recommended, however, that you take a minute or so whenever possible to close your eyes and repeat the idea slowly to yourself several times. There is nothing to fear. It is particularly important that you use the idea immediately, should anything disturb your peace of mind. 
the presence of fear is a sure sign that you are trusting in your own strength. The awareness that there is nothing to fear shows that somewhere in your mind, though not necessarily in a place you recognize as yet, you have remembered God and let his strength take the place of your weakness. The instant you are willing to do this, there is indeed nothing to fear. So I love that because what this is telling us, and this is a pro a mind training program pretty much. Now it does mention God and Jesus. It does have biblical kind of language, but it's, it's it recognizes as well it's not the only pathway to truth. Um, I'm okay with that because I disconnected God from religion a long time ago, but I know that can be hard for some people. Um, but I'd say just try and keep an open mind, you know. Um, hi, Andrew. So there is nothing to fear. You know, how willing are you to take on that on board for the rest of today and for tomorrow? And be vigilant. You know, anytime any little thought of fear comes into your mind, just to remind yourself there is nothing to fear. And it, it might feel like your your brain, so if you're very used to entertaining ideas that are based in fear, which I was at many points in my life, that's going to feel like a lie. And part of your mind is going to go, that's absolutely stupid. You know, it's ridiculous. Of course, there's things to fear. We're in the middle of a global pandemic. You know, I'm a mother, I'm a daughter. Like, what if people die? What if I go outside and get, you know, knocked down or my children do or I can't pay my mortgage? You know, there's all that. And that's where that's where this little ego mind wants to take us you know so on a road trip of fear which is actually nothingness you know because none of these thoughts are real and just remember like the what is real cannot be threatened so if you even remember that okay i am not my thoughts i am greater than my thoughts and there's something even greater than that guiding me or that i'm connected to in some way as part of this one mind that I mentioned earlier, you know, then maybe there isn't anything to fear. And maybe I don't have to try and fix everything. And maybe I don't have to try and figure everything out. So I would invite you to remember this. There is nothing to fear. And that this is a fact. Um, and it may not feel like that. For some of us at different times um and i get little reminders now every now and then you know usually it's i want something i don't have and i get all tied up and oh my god i need this i want this whatever it is and then it might take a day or two and it kind of leaves my system and i realize okay that was all complete bullshit <laughs> to be honest I thought I wanted it because I thought I knew what was best for myself because I started, I dropped my defenses and I forgot to be vigilant. I forgot to, to add, to just be aware of these thoughts and go, actually, no, I don't need to think like that anymore because there is nothing to fear. I don't need anything. Like right here, right now, in this very moment, in this very second, all of us can join, you know, in a very peaceful state of mind by just putting our attention onto that part of the mind that is just all knowing, all peaceful, and always was and is and will be. Um, so just to remember, the presence of fear is a sure sign that you are trusting in your own strength. And, you know, for me, when I do that, it feels like it feels like I have to push a boulder up a hill and it's really hard. And it makes things really hard for me, you know, if I just focus on, OK, you have to figure this out, Denise, and I need to know what I need to do next. And oh, my God. And then all of a sudden there's this snowball of thoughts and I'm paralyzed with, you know, fear, really strong word. But that's what it probably is. Overwhelm. But when I bring it back and go, OK, where am I? Who am I? I'm not. I'm not these thoughts. I'm not even this body, you know. There's part of me that is that is not. 
this Denise in this body going around on this planet. You know, that's where I'm kind of investigating lately, you know, and where I'm happy to explore, you know, that what if there is a part of our mind that is connected to everything and everybody? Like, what if that's true? You know, what a mind blowing thought that is. And what does that mean for peace, peace of mind, you know, love, like true love, unconditional love? Does that mean I don't need really anything that I was told I needed to get when I was grow when we were all growing up, you know, get this, get that, be this, do that, do more of this, do less of that, or you need to look like this, you need to does that mean that that's all a pile of BS and that I can actually just be and I can be guided and I can trust that, you know, I think it's Gabby Bernstein, Gillian reads, reads Gabby and she has a book I think called The Universe Has Your Back. You know, do I feel protected and guided or do I feel like I'm on my own steam here? And how's that working out for you? You know, what are your deepest fears when you feel that you have to figure this all out by yourself and then the end game is that you're going to end up six feet under in a wooden box? Have you ever thought, you know, maybe there's something else and what is it? And why am I afraid to explore that? Am I afraid to explore that? What's holding you back? Is now a good time to really look at that? I'd invite you to just, you know, try and stay with that if you can. And to remember that there is, there is nothing to fear. And just read this again, lesson 48, there is nothing to fear. The idea for today simply states a fact. It is not a fact to those who believe in illusions, but illusions are not facts. In truth, there is nothing to fear. It is very easy to recognize this, but it is very difficult to recognize it for those who want illusions to be true. So as I said earlier, the core states that nothing real can be threatened and nothing unreal exists. So would you be willing to even just try that on for size for the week and know that there's a part of you that is peaceful is loving is connected and that it never goes anywhere and it's just you've just been putting blocks in the way because you've been afraid actually of how truly amazing and loving and all powerful you really are and i haven't even scratched the surface of that myself you know, but would you be willing to accept and to say to yourself repeatedly this week when anything tries to take your peace, any of these thoughts, they will come and they will audition for your attention, as Muji says, and they'll come on stage and they'll they'll want your attention. You know, but can you turn your back and turn around and face the source of love and light and joy and peace that is with you and within you 100%? all the time it's your choice actually it might not feel like that and remembering that you when you do that you don't really need to figure anything out and that's been my experience 100 percent. so on that note i will close out um so just repeat that idea as often as possible there is nothing to fear let me know how you get on and thank you so much for joining me it's so lovely to have you all here and i hope you got something from this and i will see you again next saturday so have a good week bye for now thanks guys